Netsket, center Yalo Akafer, guard Nick Stoskas, the Knicks 2019 second round pick. 76 ERS get, forward Trevor Booker. Brooklyn always stood out as a logical Akafer destination. The Nets have one of the league's weakest center rotations, with only rookie Jarrett Allen as a potential long term option at the position. Timofey Mosgov, whose contract was part of the price of getting D'Angelo Russell, has seen action in just two games since November. 14 Tyler Zeller, signed for the veterans minimum as a free agent over the summer, has started seven games at center. Though he's played well offensively, Zeller shouldn't prevent Okafor from getting minutes in Brooklyn. So now the question is whether Okafor can make good on his second chance. Doing so will require improvement on offense. Yes, you read that correctly. All the focus on Okafor's defensive shortcomings, and their significant ones, has overshadowed the fact that so far during his NBA career he's rated worse at the offensive end of the floor, even after one accounts for the fact that centers are typically more valuable on defense than offense. Take ESPN's Real Plus Minus. While Okafor ranked 67th among centers in defensive RPM, minus 1-3, last season, he was 69th, dead last, with a minus 4-4 offensive RPM. Last year, the 7-6 ERS scored 7.7 .7 fewer points per 100 possessions with Okafor on the court, according to NBA.com slash stats. While that can be explained by Okafor rarely sharing time with Joel Embiid, the Philadelphia offense was similarly worse with Okafor in 2015-16, minus 76 points per 100 possessions, despite the weaker offensive alternatives at center. That partially owed to lineups with Okafor playing alongside Nerlens Noel, but with just Noel on the court, the 7-6 ERS offensive rating was 3.2 points better than with Okafor alone. How can this be, given Okafor's reputation as a dominant offensive player? Well, for one thing, he hasn't been particularly efficient. Because Okafor hasn't been the same kind of high percentage finisher he was as a college player, he shot 66.4% on two-point attempts at Duke, and because he's a sub-70% foul shooter, his true shooting percentage has hovered right around league average during two NBA seasons. Still, average-ish efficiency with above-average volume, Okafor's usage rate in his first two seasons was 27.3% of Philadelphia's plays as a rookie and 24.1% in year two, should ordinarily translate into above-average value, so that's an incomplete explanation. The greater issue seems to be Okafor's limited playmaking for teammates. His 2.2 assists per 100 team plays last season were sixth lowest among players with usage rates greater than 22%. It's possible for such a player to have value offensively but typically only as a high-efficiency scorer. N.S. Cantor of the Crosstown New York Knicks is the model the Nets should hope to emulate with Okafor. After scoring with mixed efficiency during three-plus years playing for the Utah Jazz, Cantor became a high-percentage scorer with the Oklahoma City Thunder and has maintained that since his trade to the Knicks. Like Cantor after the trade to Oklahoma City, Okafor will enjoy the best floor spacing he's ever seen in Brooklyn.